Welcome back to Building Character, where we figure out how to play as your favorite fictional characters in Dungeons & Dragons. We're going to be using 5th edition statistics and all books related to it. In celebration of Halloween, today we're building the premier slayer of the undead. No, I'm not talking about Ash or Van Helsing, Constantine, or the Winchester Boys. I mean the real master of the undead, Luigi. Luigi is the original player too, debuting in 1983's arcade game Mario Brothers. Since then, he's developed his own personality and had a successful series of games. Sure, Mario saves the Mushroom Kingdom from Bowser, but who shows up to save Mario when he goes missing? <laughs> As always, we'll figure out our goals for this build. To begin with, we need an inhuman jumping ability. Next, we need to figure out exactly how to use his unique fighting style. Finally, the reason I'm pumping this video out in time for Halloween, we have to figure out how to send the souls of the damned back into the fires of hell. For stats, we're using the standard point array from the player's handbook. That's 15, 14, 13, 12, 10, and 8. By all means, you can roll for your stats, just use this as a guide for your highest and lowest. Our highest stat is going to be Wisdom. There's clearly something special about Luigi, but I wouldn't call it Intelligence or Charisma. I think Wisdom is the perfect stat for a je ne sais quoi. Next up, Dexterity. He might look clumsy, but we'll actually address why he's so dexterous later. Strength is in the middle range. This is what controls his jumping ability. Charisma after that. Somehow this plumber landed a princess, so he must have some sort of charm. Next, Constitution. It's not terrible, but it's nothing to write home about. Finally, we'll be dumping Intelligence. We really just don't need it at all for this build. I'm calling the Mario Brothers Halflings. Luigi makes the most sense as a ghost-wise halfling, boosting your wisdom by one and your dexterity by two. Additionally, you can communicate without speaking with one person within 30 feet of you. All of Subspace Emissary takes place with the characters not talking to each other, so obviously he has some sort of psychic connection. You also get all the standard halfling goodies. Lucky lets you re-roll ones on your roll, and you have to use the second roll even if it's a one, but there's a one in 400 chance of that, so don't stress out about it too much. Your small size allows you to move within spaces of larger creatures. You also have advantage on checks against being frightened, which might seem out of character. But courage isn't the absence of fear, it's the mastery of it. And Luigi consistently does his job while terrified. For background, Guild Artisan is the right fit, giving you insight, persuasion, and the support of the Plumbers Union. For our first level, we'll take Monk. You get proficiency with two skills, take Athletics and Acrobatics. You also get Martial Arts, which means that your unarmed attacks deal 1d4, and you can use your dex for the modifier, and make one unarmed attack as a bonus action after you've used the attack action. There's also Unarmor Defense, which makes your AC 10 plus your Dex plus your Wisdom modifier, which is a good thing because I've gone through the player's handbook a couple of times looking for overall armor but have found nothing. Level 2 of Monk gives you Unarmored Movement, which lets you move an extra 10 feet, kind of balancing out the 5 feet you lose from being a halfling. More importantly though, you have Key Points, which you can spend on Patient Defense, which lets you dodge as a bonus action, Flurry of Blows, which lets you make two unarmed attacks as a bonus action instead of one, and finally Step of the Wind, which lets you dash as a bonus action and doubles your jumping ability. Now, jumping isn't something that comes up in a lot of games, so some people don't know how it works. You have to run at least 10 feet, otherwise your jump distance is halved. Horizontal jump distance is your strength score, so 13 feet for us now, or 26 with Step of the Wind. Vertical jumping is your strength modifier plus 3, so 4 or 8 with Step of the Wind. Level 3 monks get to deflect missiles, which lets you reduce the damage of a ranged attack against you by 1d10 plus your dexterity modifier plus your monk levels. You can throw the ammo back with a key point and it deals the same damage as your unarmed strike. You also get to pick a monastic tradition, and Luigi's unorthodox fighting style is similar to the way of the drunken master. Choosing this tradition gives you some bonus proficiencies, brewer supplies, and the performance skill. You also get to disengage after a flurry of blows with a bonus 10 feet of movement. Level 4 of Monk is an ability score improvement, which we'll use for the magic initiate feat. Take some druid cantrips, mending, which repairs a small tear in something no larger than a foot, fix up some pipes with that, produce flame, lets you produce flames, and then throw the flame, which deals 1d8 fire damage. Finally for your spell, take Jump. It triples one person's jump distance for one minute. So now your max horizontal jump distance is 78 feet and your max vertical height is 24 feet. That 24 foot height would normally deal some fall damage, but with slow fall, which you also get at this level, you can use your reaction to reduce the fall damage by 5 times your monk level. 
With our basic jumping and fighting abilities secured, it's time to take some levels of cleric, specifically a grave cleric. Flavor-wise, grave domain clerics are all about destroying the undead and busting ghosts, worshipping Professor Egad or Kalemvor if your DM is picky. They'll bestow you with a holy symbol for your cleric spells, anything from a flashlight to a vacuum cleaner. At level 1, Grave Clerics get the Circle of Mortality, meaning you can automatically roll maximum healing on people who are at 0 HP, and you get Spare the Dying for free. It's a cantrip that automatically makes targets stabilize while unconscious. Additionally, you get Eyes of the Grave, which lets you detect undead within 60 feet of you, an amount of times equal to your Wisdom modifier per day. Let's start looking at spells, and there's so many that we have the option of using, but I'm just going to dive into the important ones. For cantrips, Light is your Flashlight. Sacred Flame is the damage of your flashlight, dealing 1d8 radiant damage to creatures who fail a deck save of 8 plus your proficiency plus your wisdom modifier. You can also take resistance for an extra 1d4 on saves for some silly Luigi shenanigans. For first level spells, obviously we're going to check out Cure Wounds, it functions kind of like a mushroom in the Superstar Saga series, healing 1d8 plus your wisdom modifier. Guiding Bolt is a more intense light attack for the ghosts, dealing 4d6 radiant damage and granting the next attacker of your target advantage on their attack. Shield of Faith gives a creature plus 2 to AC as long as you maintain your concentration, so no shield breaks. You also get Bane and False Life from your domain and another spell of your choice, as you can pick a number of spells equal to your Wisdom modifier plus your Cleric level. Take whatever you want, I don't want to make this video too long, I'm only pointing out the most Luigi-ist spells. Level 2 of Cleric grants you another spell of your choice and another first level slot. You also get two options for Channel Divinity. The first is Turn Undead, which forces a Wisdom save against your spell DC for any undead within 30 feet of you. If they fail, they have to use their entire turn to dash away from you. You could also choose the option from your Grave Domain called Path to the Grave. You spend an action choosing a creature within 30 feet of you, cursing it to be vulnerable the next time it's attacked, meaning that damage is double. Keep in mind you only get one of these a day, so choose wisely. Third level clerics can cast second level spells, and you get Gentle Repose and Ray of Enfeeblement from your domain spells, plus one of your choice. Check out Continual Flame, it's an unending flashlight that lasts until you want it to go out, no batteries required. Fourth level of Cleric will give us another cantrip. Guidance is like resistance for checks instead of saves. It's also time for an ability score improvement, and it kind of depends on what Luigi you want to be, but Wisdom helps your spells and AC. Dexterity helps your melee attacks and AC. So pick one of those, probably. Fifth level bumps up the power of your turn undead, now fully killing any undead of challenge rating one half within your 30 foot range, provided they fail the wisdom save, of course. You can also now cast third level spells, check out Speak with the Dead, which means that you can do that for 10 minutes. Another good option would be Daylight, which creates a 60 foot radius sphere of light for one hour, dispels any darkness created by a third level spell or lower. Sixth level Grave Clerics get Sentinel at Death's Door, which lets you turn a critical hit against you, or someone you can see, into a regular hit a number of times equal to your Wisdom modifier per long rest. You also get a second use of Channel Divinity per long rest, so that's nice too. Seventh level Clerics can cast fourth level spells, and Banishment is pretty great. It imposes a Charisma save, and failing that it sends a creature to a harmless demiplane for up to one minute as long as you maintain concentration. With all that, we've got all of our jumping, slap fighting, and ghost busting abilities so we could stop, or we could double down and really feel the true power of a Luigi main. Level 8 of Cleric will improve Destroy Undead, now killing every undead up to challenge rating 1. You also get Potent Spellcasting, which lets you add your Wisdom modifier to the damage you're dealing with cantrips. There's also another ability score improvement. If you leveled up decks last time, do wisdom this time and vice versa. Now we're going to jump back to Monk for the fifth level, which gives you an extra attack. So whenever you take the attack action, it's two attacks instead of one. You'll also get Stunning Strike, which forces a constitution save against your Monk DC, which is the same as your Cleric save. It's eight plus your proficiency plus your wisdom modifier. Failing that leaves them stunned until the end of your next turn. Oh, and your unarmed strikes are now dealing 1d6 instead of 1d4. Sixth level in Monk gives you key empowered strikes, and now your fists are magical in terms of overcoming resistances. You also get Tipsy Sway as a drunken master, letting you stand up from prone with only 5 feet of movement. You can also spend a key point as a reaction when someone misses you with a melee attack, then send that attack to another creature within 5 feet of you. Level 7 gives you Evasion, which means that you take half damage on failed deck saves and no damage on successes. There's also Stillness of Mind, which lets you immediately end an effect of Charm or Frightening as an 
action. That way you can take a deep breath and get your job done. Level 8 has an ability score improvement. Take some more wisdom, you're using it all over the place in this build, and that should cap you out at 20. At the 9th level, you gain the ability to run along walls and over water while you're not wearing armor. 10th level monks get purity of body, which gives you immunity to disease and poison, so eat all the mushrooms you want, it shouldn't be a problem. Next up is the 11th level of Monk, which increases your Martial Arts die to a D8. You also get the Drunkard's Luck, which lets you spend 2 points to get rid of disadvantage on D20 rolls. Our Capstone is an Ability Score Improvement. Use this to round off Dexterity. We should be able to cap that at 20, so long as you didn't roll terribly. Now that we've hit level 20, let's talk about how good of a build this is. Starting with the positives, you're a master of slaying the undead, particularly weak ones. You might not think it while looking at him, but Luigi is pretty well suited for a zombie horde. Secondly, he is good at stopping party members from dying, locked into his supporting role since the day he was born. He's also capped dexterity and wisdom, which means 20 AC from unarmored defenses, and high saves for two of the most frequently required saves in the game. Finally, his movement abilities, lighting spells, and incredible jump distance make him a great dungeon explorer. As far as weaknesses go, the build suffers from a lack of focus. Monks are best suited for melee combat, and Grave Domain is more of a caster subclass. Variety is nice in smaller parties, but wasted in bigger groups. Strangely enough, he's also too specifically focused. A great deal of this build was spent making Luigi a Ghostbuster, which means that he's missing skills that might help him fight a wider variety of foes. But Luigi is always a character trying his best. And Dungeons & Dragons isn't about being the best, it's about being the best version of your character. Sure, he's a little weird and a little haphazard, but chaos and clumsiness can add a lot of good flavor to a game, particularly if you're only playing with your closest friends. Thanks for watching, I hope you enjoyed the video, if you did, be sure to subscribe. This week we took a look at an average Joe, but next week we're looking at a literal god, so stay tuned for that.